Hi, everyone. So we're going to talk about chapter 17, which is really um, summing up all of the equilibria concepts we have talked about so far into one neat package. And it's going to connect with some of the stuff we learned in chapter four. So when you took the pretest for this module, if you got the titration question incorrect, the first thing you should do before you watch this video is go back to chapter four. Point six, and make sure you understand how to do titration calculations using stoichiometry, so step-by-step -step dimensional analysis, instead of what you learned in high school, which is MAVA equals MBVB. So that, that equation is really, really limited. It's actually more of a dilution equation when you're not actually reacting any chemicals, because it does not account for the mole ratio between um, acid and base. And so um, we really, really, really require that you learn how to do it as shown in your textbook in section 4.6. Um, that's going to be the first kind of calculation you're going to do in chapter 17. So it's worth taking a few minutes to go and review that. Okay, so besides that, let's, let's also remember everything we knew about um, the acids and bases and how they work because all of that information is also folded into this conversation. So we're going to do a quick review in the beginning of the chapter 17 notes. Um, as usual, it is a very good practice to actually physically take notes as you watch the videos. Pause it when I tell you to, try the problems out, and then check your work. Um, I think a lot of the time people want to save time by not doing that, but I promise it is one of the best ways to learn. Um, so, oh, and I guarantee these questions, these kinds of questions are going to come up on your final too. So it's worth learning. Um, all right. So the first thing to review is, again, you must know what the strong acids are. There are seven strong acids and you also need to know the strong bases. And so then anything that isn't those, those few, what is it, probably 10 or 12 um, molecules, anything else uh, that is an acid or base is going to be weak. And so a numerical definition for a weak acid is that it has um, Ka's no bigger than like 10 to the negative 2, right? Anything bigger than that we usually consider to um, be a strong acid, meaning it dissociates all the way. All right. In addition to that concept, it's very important that you understand when we say that things are at equilibrium, what we mean is the reactants and products all exist at the same time in that solution. So for example, when we say we have an acetic acid solution, because it's a weak acid, by the way, you really should know the name of this and the conjugate, which is acetate. Okay, so acetic acid uh, is always going to have some acetate contained in the flask. It's never just pure acetic acid and water. Um, that's true for all of the uh, weak acids and bases, and that's a really, really critical concept because we're going to use that fact in chapter 17. Okay, so this is a review of chapter 15, really, but also 16 because 16 introduced the idea of what, a, what an acid is. Um, but if we want to compute the pH of a weak acid, the way to do it is uh, using an ice table. So just real quick, we have to have a reaction to do an ice table. So that's our first step. And your reaction for acetate and acetic acid looks like this. Okay, and so initially here we would have one molar acetic and none of these. The change is going to be that we're going to have to consume some of the acetic to produce some of our products. And so at equilibrium, we end up with this. Um, this is a Ka because it's an acid, it's producing H plus. Is 
is going to be defined as h plus times the conjugate divided by the parent. In this case, it's just one proton, so it's one step. And so we can just say x times x on the top divided by the one molar minus x. The k value is real small, so we can use our assumption. Um, and by doing that, we avoid having to do a lot of polynomial math and the quadratic. So instead, we can just say that the ka, and just as a review, this needs to come from Appendix D. I noticed a lot of us were trying to use other resources. Don't. There's lots of reasons for it, and I explained it, I think, in an office hour video or somewhere. But essentially, just use the one from your textbook, especially when I'm giving you assignments and when Mastering Chemistry is giving you assignments. Otherwise, you're going to get incorrect answers. So this ends up simplifying to um, 1.8 times 10 to negative 5 um, on the left. And on the right, we end up with x squared divided by 1. So to solve this, all I have to do is do the square root of both sides. The cursor disappeared. Where did it go? So we'll square root this, square root this, and of course you end up with <clears throat> a very low concentration of 0 0.00424607. Um, we only have one sig fig from our concentration, so really probably should say 0 0.004, but that's a molarity, and it is equal to H plus because we defined it there. So the last step of this calculation is just to take that molarity of H plus and plug it into our pH formula. Ooh, these are Christmas colors. I didn't even do that on purpose. So once again, I really hope that you're practicing the log and the exponent and making sure that you can get to the same answer with your calculator. Um, so the answer that you should get is 2.37. So that's pretty low, but it's not as low as like one molar HCl. One molar HCl would have um, a pH of zero, right? So that's what we mean when we say a weak acid. We mean the pH isn't as low as a strong acid would be because it doesn't, it doesn't dissociate to the same level that a strong acid does. So using the same equation, the same formula rather, the question is if I, if I add acetate, what happens? And we did this in the equilibrium experiment um, in the form of sodium acetate. So you, you can't just find acetate floating around in the world. It doesn't exist. It's not stable because it's negative unless it's in water. Um, so you have to have a counter ion. You have to have a cation to balance that charge. Most of the time, those counter ions don't matter. Okay, so you have to learn to identify the acid and their conjugate, even if there's like a sodium in front or potassium or whatever. Okay, so this is our reaction. And the question is, what happens to the pH if we add some acetate to it? And so you can use Le Chatelier's principle to figure that out, right? So if we have added acetate, it's going to cause the reaction to shift to the left. If that's true, what would happen to the pH? If we're shifting to the left, that means pH goes I wonder how many of you said down. So um, H plus does decrease, right? Because we are consuming it to shift to the left. But remember that pH is not proportional to H plus. They're inversely related. So if H plus went down, that means the pH goes up. OK. So um, this is called the common ion effect. It applies to acids and bases. Um, and actually any equilibrium really if we have basically the conjugate present 
and the parent, the pH is going to end up different from what we would predict. In the case of acids, if you put a conjugate in with the acid, it's going to be a higher pH. In the case of a base, like, um, let's think about ammonia here. That's a four, right? So um, if I increase, so our parent acid is ammonia, it's the base. Uh, if I increase the amount of ammonium that's present, of course, it's going to shift the reaction to the left, which means that the hydroxide has to decrease. And if the OH is decreasing, then that means the pH is decreasing too. Okay. So for acids, if we have a common ion that we're putting in there, it's going to increase the pH for weak acids. And for weak bases, if we have a common ion we're adding, it is going to have the effect of decreasing the pH. In other words, they're less extreme in both cases if we have a common ion. So here's an example problem. I have given you a step-by-step -step way of doing this, and none of it is particularly new. Um, you're going to use ice tables. You're going to figure out how much H plus is present, and you're going to calculate the pH. So go ahead and attempt this problem, and we will put this into, um, into the next learning check as your first question. <laughs> 